as they say all good things must come to an end. But with my set of wave five of TMNT Ultimates, an end has arrived sooner than I thought it would. Super 7's Ultimates toys look to continue the great work they did with Motu Classics after Mattel shut down Maddie Collector. One of their first big successes was TMNT Ultimates, which gave us two waves of fantastic figures that did exactly what Classics did for Motu. The figures carried a hefty premium at $45 a figure, but they had fantastic Four Horsemen studio sculpts and great paint apps. They also increased in value on the secondary market, making the higher costs still seem like a great value. But for a multitude of reasons over the past year or so, that shine has started to wear off. Super 7 has quickly expanded their Ultimates offerings to many different properties, and manufacturing delays have increased wait times to two years on some releases. Secondary market prices are much lower as well, selling below retail on a lot of figures, all while increasing its standard base price of $45 to $55. But probably the biggest sin has been the inconsistency of quality with some of their releases. Issues with Wave 5 and beyond have led me to a conclusion that would have seemed improbable only a few waves earlier. I am done buying waves of TMNT Ultimates. Wave 5 consists of four figures, Krang, Sewer Samurai Leo, Ray Filet, and Leatherhead. I'm throwing in the vendor-exclusive Undercover Raft with this group since he arrived at the same time from Big Bad Toy Store. Packaging is still the same large trapezoidal boxes, outer green sleeves for the good guys and purple ones for the bad. The sleeves open up to reveal the figures in a big window with bios on the back. The inside carries two trays, the front has the figure with accessories, with the back holding additional accessories. Starting with the Turtles, Sewer Samurai Leo was a vintage figure that I had, but never really loved. But the original renders of the Ultimate version made me really excited for the release. All the added detail and accessories made this figure really stand out when pre-ordering. In hand, it's still solid, but seems like it's 80% of what we saw in the renders. The main problem being the paint. The original renders showed off a really impressive gold paint scheme that made the turtle stand out. I also love the second head sculpt, with the samurai mask with gold teeth contrasting with the black mask. But out of package, the gold is really muted here. And the secondary head sculpt that I was most excited about getting has paint slot near the mouth. And the teeth with that muted gold paint really looks bland. Accessories are still great, however. Tons of different weapons that give you plenty of display options. You have your obligatory Super 7 pile of hands, which had the toughest time swapping out. New peg designs made it really hard to swap, and I had to use a blow dryer to remove the hands safely. The neck snapped on one of my patrons' birds in boxes, Samurai Leo. An Instagram user Needles Samurai Leo was super loose and jangly. Side by side with the vintage Leo, it looks good, but the issues stated previously keep it from being a great release. Undercover Raph was a fan channel exclusive that evokes the look of one of the most valuable vintage TMNT releases. 1994's Undercover Turtle series are some of the most rare figures that can go from hundreds to thousands of dollars. And I love how this release gives us everything the vintage Raph had and more. I love that they included the trading card as well. A really nice touch. All the vintage accessories are brought over here with a cloth good trench coat, undercover mutant movie camera, infrared googie goggles, super sensitive eavesdropping dish, surveillance spy case, private eye pistol, spy size. I love that the spy case is actually big enough to fit accessories, especially all the extra hands. This raft comes with 10 hands. That's insane. But the eight that you aren't using at any given time fit nicely in the spy case. You get two head sculpts with a gray sculpted fedora, just like the vintage RAF, and the faces match what we got with the normal RAF release. As a vendor exclusive, I think this figure is great, and I hope they get to the other three turtles. Krang looked like such a fun figure when his renders were shown. He's a smaller character, but much like the original toy, they gave him a plastic domed walker with robot arms and a gun. They also gave us two Krangs, one like the original toy and one with a more dynamic expression. They also threw in his little rolling tripod stand that he used before he got his android body. 
And for the record, I really hope they take a stab at a full-size Android body before they're done making these figures. QC slash engineering and paint problems negatively affect this Krang though. The silver paint has the opposite problem of the Samurai Leo. It's way too shiny. I have the same problem with the Slash. It's so shiny and reflective that it honestly detracts from the overall look of the figure. The original renders showed a more subdued look that I think would have translated the original toy better. The silver paint also doesn't cover imperfections. With my crane having either glue points showing through or extra passes of paint that makes it look homemade versus professionally made. The last issue is the loose joints. This has been a problem throughout the line, and I was worried that Krang wouldn't stand up at all. Luckily, I got it into a stable position, but it doesn't leave for many other poses. I really like how they designed the legs, but functionality should have been put at the forefront. I had trouble with Leatherhead stability as well. He's incredibly top heavy, and his tail is too light. I would have made his tail heavier to give greater balance to the figure but instead I've had to use his shotgun to tripod the figure upright. The tail also required some heating to get it to attach. Omitting those issues, it's a great figure. He's huge, filling in that one big per wave that Super 7 has done with TMNT. And all the paint details are fantastic. I love how they brought so many of the sculpting details of the original figure to life. His accessories are great, both the ones that were with the original figure and new additions like the fishing pole. This is the best figure of the wave. And if it weren't for the issues with the stability, I would consider it one of the best TMNT Ultimates releases so far. Last but not least, Ray Filet both frustrates and delights. The original figure was one of my favorites as a kid. I still have my original figure featured in this video. The vintage toy featured a color changing variant and one without the color change. This Super 7 update gives us the latter and in general succeeds at the task. He is fantastically sculpted, giving us all of the scale details in his shirt, his flipper and wings slash stinger look great, and both of his head sculpts are fantastic. And I absolutely adore his accessories with his original Ray Gill gun, Scarfish, and his little companion, Fish Sticks. The fish sticks figure is so awesome. They took the small mono-colored throw-in with the original, but brought it to life with fantastic paint apps based on the back of the original card and adding head articulation. But there are a few disappointments as well. He has that weird hip slash trunks issue that Casey Jones had where the torso separates from the lower half. It breaks up the profile of the figure and detracts from his overall presence. There is also a decent amount of sloppiness on the paint, which is a shame, as his colorways are simple and the sloppiness takes away from a fantastic sculpt. I also think the choice to cast the plastic of the torso the yellow color of his shirt, but painting his sleeves that yellow creates an off-color effect that proves they either needed to have it be yellow plastic throughout or paint the torso section of the shirt so that it matched the sleeves. As it stands, it just doesn't look 100% right. Five waves into TMNT Ultimates, I'm finding too many cracks in the foundation to warrant buying full waves of figures anymore, which is frustrating and sad. I love the direct connection that Ultimates makes to the vintage toys, so much more so than NECA's more TV slash comic slash film related offerings but increased prices matched with inconsistent quality is making what was a sure thing in terms of a toy line that it was all in on to cherry picking on the secondary market. Toy vendors have been giving massive discounts on some of these releases and secondary markets like eBay have these figures selling for less or way less than retail. I'll probably take my chances on the secondary market like at toy shows where I can see the figure in person and potentially buy it for less than a blind pre-order. I know that these opinions that I'm sharing are my own and I'm not trying to present them as anything beyond that. But given the fact that the secondary market prices are lower than MSRP, my opinions may be shared by more than just me. If you want to keep watching, check out this video. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.